Right, uh, my name is Mr. Smachomba, okay, your teacher of English. And today we're going to look at uh, formal letter writing. This is for grade nine. And so I remember last time we did look at the uh, informal letter writing. And we said that informal letter writing is the letter that we write to a personal friend, okay. Whereas now we are going to look at the formal letter writing, which is also called the official letter writing. Okay, when you look at the official letter writing, it is different from informal letter writing or personal letter writing. An official letter writing is a letter that we write, okay, to an organization or we write it as an official letter to an institution okay so that we are able to send information from you either one organization or to another or from yourself to an organization now when we look at an, a formal letter writing it is the type of letter that has got two addresses okay just like we looked at the, the informal letter writing we first of all have to have the sender's address in the top right corner of the paper that we are writing on and the punctuation must basically be the same okay meaning that you will have the top right corner of your letter that is where you start your your address and just like we said we said that once you have ended with the location Okay, so for example, you have uh, indicated maybe Zambia, okay, as the last one. It must end with a, a full stop, okay, and below, okay, below Zambia here, like we said in the informal letter writing, it must, we must skip a line. Once we skip a line, then we write, for example, the letter, rather the, 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 the date when this letter was, write, uh, was written, and if, for example, today is the second, okay, April, we will write second April 2020, okay, and put a full stop. And the address there must equally be punctuated with the commas, okay. The first line must be punctuated with a comma. The second line must be punctuated with a comma, and the third line must be punctuated with a what? A comma. So, while the location part, if it is Lusaka, Zambia, whatever, then it must end with the, um, a full stop. Then you skip a line. After skipping a line, you write the date below the location, and then below the date, you skip a line again. Okay? And once you have skipped a line, it means that uh, this is uh, where now you must think of writing the receiver's address. So the receiver's address must be written right at the margin after you have skipped a line below the date. Now, for example, if the address is going to be uh, an address for example, of an application letter, okay, you have been asked to write an application letter, maybe to Barclays Bank, you know, for employment as a clerk. It means that if the address is, okay, uh, a human resource manager, so you are going to write your address at this particular point, right at the margin, and it must be written in a block form, okay? So we have the human resource manager, Okay, for example, the human, okay, human resource manager, of course, in your paper it is going to be a little bit short, then you put a comma, okay, for example, if it is Zesco, you write 
Vesco Limited. Okay. And once you write Zesco Limited, you put a comma, then PO box. Okay. You write PO box maybe 20, comma, and Lusaka. Okay. Then you put a full stop. So after you have written your address, you can see in this sender's address, it's supposed to be in a slanting form. Okay? It's supposed to be in a slanting form. Whereas in the receiver's address for an application letter, official letter, it must be straight right at the margin, along the margin, in a block form like that. And once you have done that, you must again skip a line below here, below the sender's address. After you have skipped a line below the sender's address, this is where now you will be required to do what? To write your salutation. And we said that your salutation, this is now the beginning of part of your letter, to whom this letter is going. So, the salutation again must be in the same line with it, the letter, okay, the, the, the sender, the receiver's address. So it should actually start with a capital uh, letter D, dear. Now, because we don't know to whom this letter is going, you are not going to uh, sometimes address it to an individual unless it is asking for an attention of a particular person in that particular company. So because it is an application letter, we will simply write, Dear Sir, okay, and because we don't know whether this human resource is a male or female, so we are going to put a stroke, Madam. So once we have written this, we put a what? A comma. Dear Sir, Madam. After you have skipped a line, remember, the skipping of those lines, that must never be forgotten. You don't need to compress your work, okay? It must be clear from the beginning. It must be as clear as it should be. Then, once you have written your salutation, again, below the salutation, okay, we must now indicate the subject, okay? What do we want to talk about? in this particular official letter. It is different from uh, the, the personal letter where you just start writing like that, no uh, good afternoon, no greetings, remember, in these uh, uh, official letters. You don't need to greet. So after you have uh, uh, written your salutation, okay, take note here, okay, after you have written your salutation, we will find a situation whereby, uh, after, for example, if we, our salutation is starting from here, dear, sir, stroke, madam. Okay? So you skip a line here again. And it is here now where below the salutation, after we have skipped a line, we need to ensure that. Uh, now, we indicate the subject. I'm sure you must have uh, written, you see in some letters where it says reference. Now, when you're writing reference, don't write it in short form here. Okay? You need to ensure that you write, for example, in full. Okay? Reference. Okay? Write reference and put a colony. And if, when you write reference now, you write application, for example, if it is an application letter, okay, application for the post, okay, for the post, for example, of clerk, okay. And put your foot. Then you underline. Okay? 
So once you have written this, sorry, once you have written this, it means that this is the subject of what you are going to talk about. It will show you exactly what actually you are writing about. If it is a complaint letter, the same, you must indicate reference complaint letter. Okay, so that when somebody picks it up, and the one who is going to receive it is the human resource, what is that letter about? It is an application letter. Application letter for which job? For clerk. If it is for general worker, general worker, you must indicate. Then after you have written the reference there, that is where now again you skip a what? A line. Below the reference topic. Skip a line. And from there now, this is where you start now your first sentence. Either by, I do hereby, okay, write, okay, you continue, okay, and your, I do hereby write, okay, to apply for the post of clerk in your organization, okay. And then, when you are writing an application letter, you must indicate where did you get that information from, okay? If it is, for example, you saw this application in the Times of Zambia, you must be in a position to indicate that. In. With reference to this, I apply for the post of clerk in your organization, okay? This follows the what? The advertisement which appeared in such, such a newspaper. That is what you do. So that the, the writers or rather the, the receiver is going to know exactly where you got that information from. After you have done that, then you can now outline who you are. Okay? Are you a male or a female? Then you talk about academic qualifications. What academic qualifications do you have? Okay, are you a grade 12? And what did you get in your grade 12? What are your grades, for example? You can even indicate, okay, what you got. And then talk about your professional qualification. And the professional qualification, this is where now you are going to talk about the, 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 the qualifications that you got, for example, from colleges, universities, or any other tertiary institutions. You must indicate, okay, what your qualifications are. After you have done that, you would be now required to come to an end of your work, and you must show what you are able to do, okay, briefly in that particular application letter. And meaning that when you are talking about academic qualification, it must actually be indicated in a separate uh, paragraph. When it comes to professional qualification, indicate it also in a separate paragraph. When it is coming also to the other relevant information that you want to show the human resource, you must also uh, include it, write it uh, in a separate paragraph so that you do not mix ideas. Ideas must flow uniformly from academics, professional, experience, and then what you are able to do. Then at the end of it all, as you come to end your, 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 your letter, you must ensure that again, at the end of the paragraph, you skip a line before you can indicate, okay, to whom that letter is going. For example, when you are ending it, you are going to say, yours, either sincerely, and now when you talk about this, Sincerely, it must be a small S, okay? Sincerely, okay? And you put a comma. Yours sincerely, and before you write your name, you must make sure that you put your signature. Okay? Yours sincerely or yours faithfully, and faithfully, if it is faithfully, again, small what? Small f, not capital or capital S, because this is not a proper noun and this is not a proper noun. So you must make sure that you put a comma, you put a comma, and then below, before you write your names, 
write your signature. And the, after you have written your signature, if it is that way, then what you do, this is where now below, you write your full names. Okay, then you can write yours, Paul Ziva. Okay, then it, it ends there. So meaning that if you would have actually written your official letter. So official letters must always carry the sender's address, then the receiver's address, and then you must ensure that if you skip the line for each part of the starting point where you have been required to. So that at the end of it all, as you are ending, you skip another line, and then where you say, yours sincerely or yours faithfully you remember to punctuate those words very well and then put a signature before you can write it not you write your name and then below you write a signature that is not the, the way so for now we are going to break from here and then you'll be given um, an exercise which you are going to do okay thank you